The aim of the following sections is to troubleshoot some of the issues that you may have with the GPS, um, including internet connectivity, connecting to the entry of caster, not receiving corrections, and also any Bluetooth antenna issues you may face. Internet connectivity issues. The first sign of a loss of internet will appear on the top bar by lack of an at sign just below the corrections arrow. If you do find that you don't have this, then you need to go to configure, interfaces, highlight internet and then press F3 edit and look at some of the internet interface settings. Firstly, make sure your port and device are correct. Uh, the standard kit has a clip on with an MC75, but you may be using Bluetooth to mobile. If, the, if you're happy with that, then move to the bottom of the page and you'll see there's a user ID and password. Now, you should be able to get this from your mobile phone provider, but if not, by all means, give us a ring. If you're happy with these, you can press continue. And keeping internet highlighted, go to F4 control and type in your APN. Once again, this is more information you'll be given by your, your mobile phone provider. If you're happy with that, press continue. And if all the settings are okay, and you still don't have an at sign at the top, it's more than likely that you don't have GPS coverage in that area. If after following this pairing process, your antenna is still not paired up, there's a good chance you've disrupted your Bluetooth connection and we'll need to go into the Windows Mobile side of things and deselect it. How do we do this? From Main Menu, we press Shift and then F6 Exit. That takes you to a Windows desktop type screen. You'll then press the Windows Globe in the bottom left hand corner and go to Settings, Control Panel, Bluetooth Device Properties. Once you're in this screen, you'll see a table on the right hand side saying Trusted and in that side you should see your Bluetooth antenna. If you can highlight this and use the arrow keys to move it into Untrusted and then press OK and escape back to the main desktop screen. From here, press the SmartWorks icon and this should bring you back into your home page whereby your antenna should now connect. If it still doesn't connect, then you can go back into your, into your pairing screen and repair them again. Not forgetting that if any time it asks for an authentication request, you need to type in four zeros. Once you've done this, your antenna should pair up. Inability to connect to the NTRIP server. If you have an internet connection but you're still not receiving corrections, then we need to look at some of your server and NTRIP settings. We find them in Configure, Interfaces, Highlighting Real-Time and pressing F3 Edit. On this page you're expecting to see Real-Time Mode as Rover, Real-Time Data RTCM version 3.1, the port should be Net1 and your device should be Internet. If these are correct then press F2 Rover and Accept Reference should be set to Any Received and your reference network ideally should be set to Max. This is the case, tap across to the NTRIP page and ensure that your mount point is set to max-rtcm version 3. If this is correct, you can also check your license details here, check that your license number is OK and you can check with us at SECS to find out whether or not your license is still valid. If you're happy with that side of things, tap back to the general tab and what we're going to do now is we're going to refresh the GGA by pressing F4, deselecting automatic, continuing it out of the screen and then going back in and resetting it to automatic. Once you've done that you can press continue and you continue again back to the interfaces page. Now we've looked at all those pages now what we're going to do is press control and this gives us our server details. So you're expecting to see a server name, smart net or something similar and the following numbers for the host address and the TCP IP port. If they're correct, then you can continue, and that is your entry and server settings checked. Thank you for watching the SECS support video. We hope this has been a benefit to you. If you require further assistance, please do not hesitate to contact our technical support department, and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.